Hello and welcome to today's webcast with Checking.com Group. Today we have the CEO Christopher Kassel and CFO Martin Boimel with us. If you have any questions for Christopher and Martin, you can ask them uh, in the form um, on this web page where you find this uh, webcast stream. And with that said, I hand over the word to Christopher and Martin. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Christopher Kassel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of, of Check-In and uh, Martin, who is our CFO, is also on the call. And uh, I think we'll try to continue the same format as we have had previous quarters. Uh, this is our third quarterly report as a listed company. Uh, and uh, we assume that most people who listen in uh, have read the report and, and know the company uh, to some extent, at least. So we'll try to highlight uh, some of the takeaways from the report and uh, try to go straight uh, straight to the point and then leave room for, for questions at the end. Uh, and for me, what really summarizes this quarter, I think, is that we have we have really, it feels like we have really geared up to a new level. Uh, both in terms of demand uh, from the market for our software, uh, but also internal capacity uh, to handle that demand and, and take advantage of it. Um, we deliver yet again uh, a strong and increasing growth for the quarter. Uh, the quarterly growth uh, for Q4 compared to last year is 84% up. Um, and this is really driven by a a strong demand. We, we see several macro trends that uh, gives us, uh, you know, gives us a tailwind really and, and, and drives the business forward. Um, both digitalization, but, but also perhaps more importantly, uh, regulation in several of our key markets. So we have a strong uh, demand. We have also built up a capacity uh, throughout the last couple of quarters uh, to, to really handle that, uh, that demand. We, we have invested heavily in a new sales organization and invested in the technology. So in a sense, we have bigger, bigger sales to, to capture that wind with. Um, and now that the growth in the quarter is in line with our long-term target, which is to reach half a billion uh, Swedish krona uh, at the end of, or sorry, uh, for the full year uh, of 2025. And I mentioned that in my, in, in my CEO comment that if you zoom in on the, gra in the growth rate between Q quarter three and quarter four, uh, the momentum is actually even, even higher. Uh, if you extrapolate that growth, it, it correlates to a three, three X, uh, revenue growth, uh, on a yearly basis. So we are in a strong momentum as well. Uh, Another way to visualize that is, is quarter by quarter, uh, the, the total revenue we have had. Uh, and, and we know that historically we have had strong Q4s, a uh, strong end, end of the years. Uh, and we see that also here, but we feel that this is sort of a new level. Um, and uh, we're expecting uh, increased growth also in the coming quarters. Um, and this, this quarter, I think the whole Q4 gives us confidence in, in the growth investments we have done. So we have invested strongly in the, the, the parts of the company that drive growth. Um, and it, it's really our high gross margin that facilitates this. It gives us room to invest in the new sales organization, which has started to contribute. I think here we still think that uh, we, we, we will gain more speed in the coming quarters when it comes to the sales organization. Um, but we also in, increased our marketing spend dramatically. Uh, we have continuous, uh, continued to, to invest in technology. And I write about that in the, in the, in the CEO comment, but we have, we have the feeling that we are really getting a positive spiral effect here. And the hope is, uh, and I talk about that sometimes, uh, to see the business as a flywheel, where we 
it takes some effort to get it spinning, but once it's spinning, it keeps spinning, uh, largely thanks to our high net revenue retention rates. Uh, and that gives us comfort in investing in growth because we know that the investments we did in growth during Q3 grew the revenues during Q4, which in turn allows us to invest again in more uh, growth. And a lot of these investments, I think we will see uh, the results of in the coming quarters. So we're trying to speed this up and we're feeling that Q4 gives us uh, confidence uh, in the strategy. Um, and speaking about strategy, we, we're sort of continuing along the, the, the path that we have chosen for the business. We're focusing on new customers to continue invest in customer acquisition, global scalability. At the end of, uh, at the, end of the year, we had 160 paying customers in total. But we also grow with our existing customers. We, we are able to continue to deliver positive net revenue retention by having our existing partners stay with us and also expand their usage of our software. And this is a new metric we're, we're, we're adding to, to the Q4 report, which, our, which is our NRR, uh, which is 137%. So it shows the, the strong growth that we have from the clients, uh, from, from the existing client cohorts. Uh, so we're growing with, 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 the, with, the, with the customers we're having as well. Um, and lastly, we're also continuing to look for teams and technology uh, to acquire. We have done two acquisitions uh, last year, uh, both GetID and DataCorp, and I'll talk a bit more about DataCorp. But these acquisitions are, are quite small. They, the dilution is altogether less than 5%. But for us, we believe this is important uh, technological acquisitions that will strengthen us in the long term. Um, and going a bit deeper into DataCorp, we, we acquired it uh, uh, during Q4. We announced it and, and we acquired it uh, in, in January. And uh, it's an Estonian AI company that develops facial recognition uh, software and computer vision software that we believe is is really you know world leading in its niche um, and that technology will strengthen our tech leadership and uh, really enhance our software uh, i think both in the medium and and in the long term and it is uh, our technology that makes us grow fast it's because our software works, because our software creates big, uh, large values for our customers, that we ha have a high demand, that we have a high net revenue retention, and that really puts us in a strong position also for the years to come. And that's true both for the R&D uh, that we're investing heavily in, as well as DataCorp in this case, or GetID, which is another technology we acquired last year. Uh, so our focus here when it comes to acquisition is to keep integrating the two acquisitions we have done on a technological level, on an operational level, and also to, to keep on commercializing uh, the, the software in the best possible way. And, um, uh, and I, I think this gives us all together when it comes to Q4, it, it gives us comfort also in our long-term financial goal, which is to grow the net revenue uh, in average 86% annually uh, uh, and to reach half a billion CIC at 2025. Um, we're in line with this growth in, in Q4 and we feel confident uh, with this goal. Um, so to sum up Q4, it's, it's strong growth, it's in increasing growth. It's also a, a quarter where we, where we have high and increasing gross margins that have allowed us to invest in the business. And we see very positively on 2022 uh, and the year to come. So it will be interesting to see um, the development for this year. And with that, I leave over to Martin, who will dig into the financial figures a bit more. 
Thank you, Christopher. And to those of you who have read the actual report, you've probably now noticed that it's a little bit longer and kind of a bit more details and notes than our previous reports. And this is due to the fact that we've had many, especially international investors, asking us about our uh, accounting standards. And it's therefore worth noting that this is the first report that we are uh, releasing in accordance fully with IFRS, i.e. the International Financial Reporting Standards. Um, this has been, a, this transition job has been a fair amount of work internally, but the numbers themselves aren't really impacted. And for those interested, there are a lot of notes and details about that in the actual report. But I was thinking this presentation to go through just the, the numbers themselves and, and how we see the quarter developments. Um, so to summarize, uh, net revenue increased with 84% to 13.4 million SEC um, in the quarter. Um, gross margin also went up to 84%. Um, we continue to invest in sales and marketing, remaining at uh, three times the level uh, that, we, that we invested last year and last quarter. Um, EBTA just below break even with a margin of minus 6%, same as Q4 last year. And cash flow from operating activities slightly improved from last year, minus 1 million uh, SEC. And we ended the year with 92 million uh, in, in cash and netting out our interest bearing debts. We had a net cash of 69 million um, and an equity ratio 80%. So if we start by looking at the um, net revenue, um, those who have followed us in last quarterly presentations recognize this chart. And now we've added the, the largest building block to date with a, with a total revenue of 13.4 million in the quarter, uh, which uh, completes the, the stacked 2021 column with revenues of 38.9 million in, in the year of 2021. And the growth in a quarter of 84% is in line with the, with, the, with the growth rate from last year. And it's also in line with our long-term financial targets that Christopher just discussed. Um, but it's also an acceleration compared to the growth in the previous quarters uh, of, of 2021, where we grew between 65 and 72%. But maybe the most interesting part of this slide, I think, is the is the way we have grown. If you look at the quarterly revenues of 13.4, it's actually quite a lot bigger than the full year revenue of 2019, which further illustrates uh, the growth journey that we're on. Then moving to gross profit, um, it amounted to 11.3 million kroner in the uh, in the quarter, uh, corresponding to a margin of 84%, which is the same we also had for the full year of 2021, um, and which is also slightly higher than the 81% we had in 2019 and 2020. And as Christopher touched upon earlier, uh, it's our strong margins and, and therefore our high gross profit, the 32.5 million kroner in, in, um, in the full year of 2021, that enable us to reinvest uh, further into growth generating activities, foremost product development and sales and marketing. And, and looking at sales and marketing specifically, you can see here uh, that, um, that we, we continue uh, the investments that we kind of uh, touched upon in the last quarterly report where we, where we stepped up uh, the investments to about 40%, and in this quarter, the, the exact number landed on 39%, so continuous investment in, in sales and marketing. Um, and in absolute numbers, we have more than tripled our investments in sales and marketing during the year of 2021. Um, and in absolute numbers, it's it's 9 million sec more than during 2020, as can be seen in the left-hand side of the charts here. And even though we've had uh, uh, those uh, strong investments, um, we uh, where we where we still see a lot of the upside. Hopefully, lies ahead of us in in terms of the investment we're doing in sales and marketing. We still manage to keep EBITDA close to break even and in line with the margin of six percent we had in this quarter last year. Um, and and uh, even though we had those nine million kroner of extra investment in sales and marketing, we EBITDA ended up. 
just 4 million kroner below last year, which uh, further emphasized the, the strength of our business model where we have efficient and scalable growth with uh, high gross margins and, and a great organization that delivers a lot of value to our customers. And then going to the last page, um, if we look at our financial position, I think the charts pretty much speaks for themselves. Uh, we ended the year with a cash position of about 92 million kroner. And if we net out the interest bearing debt, we had net cash of 69 million, uh, which I think is the highest number we have ever had on a kind of quarterly reporting basis. Um, and this is obviously also reflected in our equity ratio, which also went up to 80% at the end of the year. And with that, I turn back to Christopher for a summary and some concluding remarks. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, so to, to summarize the, the financial position at, at the end of Q4, uh, we have strong and increasing growth. We have high margins that is also increasing. Uh, that has allowed us to, to invest significantly in long-term uh, growth. And we have a cash, cash position that enables further acquisitions as well. So all in all, we, we have a really good position going into to this year. And as I said before, we're, we're looking forward for 2022 and, and, and the quarters ahead. Um, and with that, I will leave back the word to Christopher for some questions. Great. Thank you, Christopher and Martin, for, for the presentation. So. Let's kick off the Q&A session then. Uh, how has the development been regarding the Dutch gaming market? Uh, yeah, we, we haven't publicized any details uh, on a sort of market by market split in, in the quarterly report. Um, but we see very strong demand in the Dutch market, which is a re-regulated iGaming market. We also see the same in, in Germany, and we have big hopes for, for the upcoming regulation in, in Canada or Ontario that is, uh, that is upcoming. So I, I, I think this is one of the examples where regulation really is positive for us and, and drives the business. So it keeps, uh, we keep having a very strong momentum in Holland uh, as well as some other re-regulated uh, iGaming markets. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is regarding uh, Ryanair. So Ryanair was during Q3, uh, one of your fastest growing customers. How has the development, development been during Q4 with regards to the presence of Omicron, for example, here in Europe? Um, yeah, I, I think um, uh, we, we, we normally don't uh, comment on specific customers' development, and I think that uh, they probably want to, to comment themselves on how Omicron has, has affected their developments and so on. So I'll, I'll leave that to, to Ryanair. Uh, but on a more general note, we have a positive net revenue retention, as I mentioned, and uh, we believe a lot in the cooperation with Ryanair, but also in the travel market in general. Um, so we hope that uh, it will be a positive uh, cooperation also in the coming year. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the growth rate between existing and new customers? Yeah, I think uh, here is where we uh, publicized the the net revenue retention numbers. And, and if you look into the report more in detail, I, I think you can actually back solve that a bit with that number. So we are growing with our existing customers. Um, so even if we don't acquire any new customers, we will still grow. But as I've said before in, in previous presentations that long-term we need to expand our customer base, of course. Uh, we want to become a global SaaS software company that really changes the internet and, and that's about new customer acquisition. So uh, we get a, a lot of growth from the existing customers, uh, but we also focus, of course, on, on, on new acquisition. Okay, thank you. Uh, and if we look at the ARR, what is the number for ARR uh, as of now? We have previously published uh, when we uh, that, that during Q3 we broke a milestone of 50 million CAC ARR. Uh, 
and we, we will continue to, to publish when we break some of these larger milestones when it comes to ARR. I think a good estimation of our current ARR is to take the quarter and multiply it by four. Uh, that gives a hunch of where we are, but we are not uh, tracking ARR or publicly, uh, we are not uh, tracking it as a metric uh, on a quarterly basis uh, in that sense. Okay, thank you. And next question is, uh, you performed a, a strong Q4. Uh, how much of that is explained by seasonal effects? Yeah, I think uh, this is a good question. It, it's really Q4 has been a strong quarter historically for us. And, and I think this quarter, again, is very strong. Um, when I show the chart where I, I stack the, the quarters next to each other, uh, for, for us, it feels like uh, Q4 is at a new level. Uh, we also have that expectation based on the sort of momentum we're feeling where we think that uh, Q1 and, and the coming quarters will have a, a higher growth. Uh, but, but it's really up uh, it's, it's really up for us to prove that with, with the Q1 numbers once they come. But our expectation is that part of it is strong seasonality, but that we really have geared up uh, to a new level in a sense. Okay, and if uh, you invest heavily into sales and marketing, uh, have you seen any effects of this? Uh, yes, of, of course, it's... it's uh, we, we think that uh, that the increased investments, of course, is adding to, to the capabilities of, of taking care of the demand that we see for our software. Uh, but I think everyone should also be aware that our sales cycles, especially when it comes to enterprise customers, are quite long. It's uh, several months or so. Uh, and uh, that means, I think, like Martin said, that a lot of the investments that we're do, doing during Q4 is really to facilitate even higher growth in the, in the coming quarters. So uh, you, you, we, we're, we're thinking quite long term when it comes to our investments in sales and marketing. And, and uh, with the accelerated growth that we have had, it gives us more and more money to, to invest in that. And um, from Q3 to Q4 this year, we increased the, the marketing and sales spend with almost 40% in absolute numbers. So we have invested really heavily in Q4 and, and we think that uh, the effect of that hasn't been seen yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Martin, you mentioned there in the, the presentation that you have switched to IFRS. Could you please just elaborate a bit more on why you have taken that decision? Yeah, sure. I, I can just comment on that also and, and just add to what Martin said that uh, the, the main driver is that we have international investors who, who, who are used to the standard and, and asked us to, to, to follow it. That's one part of it. The other part is that each part of the company, we're trying to be best in class, whatever we do. Uh, and I think that uh, this comes also to the reporting where we set higher standards uh, for, the, for the coming reporting. Uh, so, so it's sort of in our DNA to try to excel at, at every level. Okay, thank you. Um, next question then. Um, what does it mean that the growth during the quarter is in line with your communicated growth target towards 2025? I think the, 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 the main point with that is of course that it gives us comfort both when it comes to that we're on the right track, uh, that we are thinking right when it comes to our strategy of reinvesting in growth uh, and keeping high gross margins and, 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 and uh, deliver software that our customers uh, value. Uh, so I, I think it gives us comfort that we're on the right track. It also uh, strengthens our, uh, our uh, confidence in the goals. We have been very confident from, from start uh, that we will reach half a billion SEEC in 2025. And I think this shows that... Uh, uh, shows in numbers that that's that that's doable. Okay, thank you. And uh, 
the final question for this Q&A session. Uh, and you, you mentioned there in the presentation the acquisition of DataCorp, uh, an interesting acquisition, I would say. Could you please elaborate a bit uh, on, on your view on how, how DataCorp will, be, will fit into Checkin.com's uh, offer as it is right now? Absolutely. We, Data Corp is, uh, is uh, really uh, quite, a really quite fantastic technology and team working on an on a AI technology for, for facial recognition, as I talked about. And our stra strategy for acquisitions is to acquire technology and teams that adds to our software and, uh, and uh, uh, makes the product better, uh, especially in the medium to long term. So I think we should see the data corp acquisition on, on quite maybe one year or maybe several years perspective, to be honest. And uh, we're investing, like I said, heavily in R&D ourselves, and this complements that. Uh, the data corp technology is around facial recognition of what's called one to N. So one to many. Uh, Get ID that we acquired last year has a technology that can do matching one to one really well. So you can show your passport, you can take a selfie and Get ID can say, yeah, this is the same person. Uh, Data Corp adds to that technology by making it possible to match one face out of many, which open up new possibilities in long term when it comes to authentication and, and logins, but also gives us a a technology that we think really sets us, how should I say, that really t enables the software to be improved considerably, uh, even in the medium term. Uh, so I think I said in my comment that we hope to share some more details on, on the R&D work that we're doing. Uh, for natural reasons, we're not always, uh, you know, we're not sharing everything that we're working on, but uh, I think we will communicate a bit more on that and, and including the, the data corp uh, technologies that are included. Okay, thank you. Um, so that was the final question for this Q&A session. A big, a big thank you to Christopher and Martin for, for presenting um, uh, the last quarter. And a big thank you to all the viewers who have sent in questions to us. And with that said, I wish you all a, a good day and hope to see you again in the coming quarterly presentations. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.